Good day, everyone, and welcome to Obedient Family TV, the program I hope are live. Yes, hope day for those that believe that a new Nigeria is possible. On a good morning, afternoon, and evening, depending on our time zone, today we have come to have a discussion again on what is happening on Nigeria. Breaking news coming out from Delta State reflect that uh, uh, one uh, Joseph, uh, B, what is his uh, name? Israel. Israel is an activist, the person who uh, arranged or organized a peaceful protest that he tagged and it went viral for everyone who is under hardship in Delta State Worry area to come out for a protest, a peaceful protest, as he en envisaged. And now com breaking coming out from Delta is that uh, they have detained and have arrested him and are moving to charge him for terrorism. What an irony where uh, thousands of people are gathered uh, and uh, protesting for their economic hardship and uh, the hunger that is biting everybody in the land. Then somewhere at National Assembly, we also find this afternoon that um, uh, a pro Tunubu or let's say Tunubu sponsored protests erupted at the National Assembly. As we can see, why do we say this is uh, a sponsored protest? Not because they are protesting against NLC, but because they were chartered in uh, luxurious buses, uh, different uh, luxurious buses with air condition to come for this protest. Where do they come from? So these are protunable youths that stormed National Assembly today and um, trying to see how they could st forestall the NLC's um, scheduled uh, protest of the hunger biting everyone in Nigeria. This is happening today at the National Assembly. We wait to hear what uh, the National Assembly hierarchy has to say about all of this going on there. But somewhere in Delta, they did not just come out uh, to, to uh, cover the event, but they had to arrest people on hardship protests and label them terrorists. That is the irony of what we have seen. Again, talking about terrorism, then we have someone who is not just uh, uh, insulting uh, the, the, the presidency, not just insulting uh, the dignity of Chief Bola Tinubu, but on the wife, calling her an infidel that needs to be killed. I is just so much going on right now in Nigeria, and it seems like the North is just uh, holding on and uh, uh, they're, they're waiting to explode, really. That's what we are seeing. It's a trending video and um, we will bring that and the conversation that is actually going on throughout the whole mainstream media and even on social medias trending everywhere. No be only me go talk this to you know because he plenty. I get divine for studio. Well, um, warm welcome to the warm meaning Nigerians all over the world. Thank you for joining us today. So as you they join us now, make you know fail to like and share this video so that other people go know what they happen for Delta states. Say they arrest that Israel. The guy will be say na peaceful protest nine in post. He no talk so many people come riot or something. Peaceful protest in right time, broadcast time. Make you share this video, make people know, make them release the guy. Then again, I, we want you also to rebroadcast this very medium as this National Assembly or what you think, whether these pro uh, Tunubu supporters at National Assembly, do you think that they are the, the, the people who are actually in this hardship? Uh, do you think that they are hungered? Because we can't see any banner that is showing that there is hunger in their faces. We can't see anything, but we can see them uh, being uh, uh, coming out with different placards uh, to say stop the protests. What is happening in Nigeria if it is not sponsored? But again, uh, the president of National Assembly, which is Ababio, 
already said that protests are sponsored and we have started seeing one so they will sponsor one and ask them to come to their own domain which is the national assembly where they will be protected where no police will come and arrest nobody where no police will be shooting at the top or soldiers around and you see police around them but nothing will happen but where the masses really are where they are hungry you will see them what about what happens uh, today? You can see the shot, you can see the gun that is being shot at the screen right now. Being shot up for people who are protesting. But we don't see that at National Assembly. Because the National Assembly are now using sponsored protesters. However, we move forward from Abuja to Lagos. We see what is happening in Lagos. Bags of rice being hanged on the head of women who are desperately hungry. This is happening in Nigeria. Customs giving bags of rice to these people, not for free, with their name we mentioned that earlier, but putting that very same uh, bag of rice to their heads, each one of them, as if they are throwing the bags of rice at them. We'll bring that. But let's start with this very particular thing at National Assembly. Um, the, um, divine, we can see clearly the... Uh, Goswil Apabio, who is the president of Senate, made it very clear that uh, the sponsored protesters are all over Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And they have shown us one. At least for today, we have seen that protesters who were actually sponsored came out to National Assembly and being backed by the police and civil defense. And they were there protesting at the National Assembly for their own sake. Well, um, we've seen, like you rightly said, about the um, sponsored protests. And, um, you know, I have just one question. Are these youths um, pro Tinubu or are they pro um, stomach infrastructure? Because from the looks of it, these are just victims of the ravaging hunger in the Nigerian ecosystem currently because I see no reason why you allow yourself to be bought over by politicians who do not have your interest at heart and have them print, um, you know, placards for you. We see most times when they say hunger, um, you know, inspired protests by the masses, they just come out. You see, there's no organization. This protest obviously has a structure. You can see printed banners, well printed, with different colors. You can even tell printed t-shirt, myself. Yeah, and even um, printed caps. So you can tell um, when something was um, sponsored by politicians. And once again, that's why I said they are pro stomach infrastructure. Yes, and They're just divine. for what to eat. Yes, and divine. You notice there, you will see that Channel's television was invited, mm -hmm. Arise television was invited, and most of these people, I mean, before you call them to call you, there must be an arrangement. Right. Protest, except the one that is organized, like the one that happened in Delta, right. which obviously uh, they said they have arrested the person right. who uh, is calling people to protest in peaceful manner. So, like you said, National As Assembly is complicit in yeah. this. Obviously, that's what we are seeing. I'm very deliberate. You can see it's a very deliberate action. Almost looking like they had the newsmen on standby. And then they told them, you know what? Just go and protest now. The um, newsmen are waiting for you to take your stories. And I understand that it is the duty of these um, media houses to report what is going on. But at the same time, I think maybe we should learn to shun certain, um, you know, displays of um, ignominy because I don't understand why you are giving, um, you know, would I say um, audience to a bunch of clowns who we can see. They even came in fully conditioned um, vehicles. From the looks of it, this um, project had a budget. They sponsored it, printed for it, and that's why we can't take them serious. This is another, after all, it's still the same government that hired 40 fake bishops. So there's really nothing they cannot do to, um, you know, um, exonerate themselves. But yeah. I expect them to channel this entire energy into actually, you know, alleviating the suffering of the masses instead of, you know, buying people. Yeah, over but it comes with without a surprise to me. Mm -hmm. And why I say that is that uh, yesterday we we saw the tweet that uh, Daniel Boala says mm -hmm. that if you love Tunubu, if you know what you have to do for Tunubu, right. you need to support him at this very time. Mm -hmm. This, this, and that, this, and there are so many things around that tweet that we projected yesterday. Yeah. So he, he has called everybody around Tunubu, whatever they can do. Now what they are doing is to doing a counter protest but obviously i must say this straight on chief bola tunubu what to do is to look at the whether the stimulus package you want to bring out for nigerians whether you 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 look at the solution that you have and you start tabling them down i'm talking about solution i heard uh, um we have a report that um Samuelu, the governor of lagos state right. intends to feed about one thousand 
and 500 uh, people uh, with uh, Mama Put in Lagos, where they will be giving them food once in a day. Is that the plan that the government has in this hardship time to feed people? He referenced COVID time. COVID time, we understand it was a pandemic. Mm -hmm. People can't even go out. They can't even buy food stuff. But this time around, you say you want to feed. How many people will you, put, will you feed in Lagos State that is about 8 million or 20 10 million? million? 20 million people. Can you imagine that? How many people on which budget are we talking about? What is really going on in Nigeria? How stupid do they think we are in Nigeria? Let's hear uh, very briefly on what that Sawolo had to say about this. We'll come back. We'll not go to it. Level will be that we are now going to do what we call, you know, the, the, the soup bowl, the, the, the soup kitchen. We did it also during COVID. We want to identify uh, Mama Put, Mama, you know, um, 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 Ketras that are in your and we want to be able to feed between 1,000 and 1,500 in every local government per day, you know, at the first instance for the next, you know, 30 to 60 days. So let's watch out the logistics. You know, we are identifying, you know, the, 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 the caterers already, you know, uh, funds will be sent to them and they will have vouchers so that just people just walk in, you know, and just give them something, you know, to eat, you know, one a day and let's just continue you know, on that. The, the, the whole idea around this is that one of the verticals will reach, will reach you in one form or the other. So that's regarding food. No, I've not just hear them. People that don't have solution, they, I, it just baffles me on how they think. Yes. 1,500 per local government on Mama Put, according to him. Yeah. Well, um, Lagos has 20 local governments, um, and so if we do 1,500 times by 20 local governments, we're talking um, an average of like 30,000 people across the states, right? And so the question is just that, um, why do you um, always look for short-term solutions? These are, these are nothing, because I mean, the average man has to eat at least two square meals. And so when you say we'll give them one, what does that do eventually? After you finish eating the mama foods, what does that do for you? The hunger is still crying. And now this is just, um, you know, looking like um, they're trying to replicate what is going on in the north with the Almagiris. Maybe do the, this is probably like the Western version of the Almagiris because now you have them with vouchers, according to what he said, and then they queue up and then you give them food. When in reality, you can just make life easier for them. I was looking at the banner why, um, behind him while he spoke, the one that said, um, Sanwo Lu speaks and they are building hope and building resilience. And my problem is this resilience that the um, Nigeria um, ruling class keep, you know, selling to Nigerians, you know, be patient, be resilient, good things will come. And eventually, good things never actually come. It just goes from bad to worse to worse. And every day you keep saying building resilience. So why are you not leaving off this, um, you know, grant or rather this mama puts this thing um, food that you're offering to Lagosians because they're better than that a city that has over 20 million population you're intending to feed them by Lagos is a major city that has factories you understand me right. they could build up uh, you know subsidies in factories where people will gain employment in these factories you right. understand me they could uh, uh, support different businesses because Lagos state is a very very uh, is an economic uh, uh, area you understand economic activity happens on a daily basis so there is different packages that they could set up and make people uh, to start getting themselves back so they, even when you say it is short term they don't see it as short term because they have not said what their long-term plans are we don't have it what are the plans but anyway, let me remind us, whatever is your, uh, you want to comment on this, please go to the comments section. Tell us what you feel about feeding 1,500 people palliative. Is it the 30 billion that was given to them that they are now using? Because the next thing we've heard, we hear is that they have used uh, 30 billion to feed 1,500 people in each local government please feel free to go to the comment section then i will not forget also to implore you to please uh, uh share this very video of this very particular activist israel from delta state worry that the police detained him and um that is uh, israel joe and moved to charge him for terrorism for just 
organizing a peaceful protest. Well, you know what's interesting to see about this detention of this Israel Joe guy is that um, a few days ago we were discussing about the Hamas leaders that were in Nigeria. These are people that are known terrorists, people that, um, you know, blast. Um, in fact, the whole um, October 7, 2023 incident that happened in Israel where they, you know, bomb blasted schools and rather just did a lot of inhumane things. These are the people that our government invites over, has conversations with them on round table life television but they draw the line when a young man tries to you know you know gather people who are feeling the same plights with him to come and you know ask for a better living for them but they are allowed to you know and invite it, Hamas <clears throat> um, people that we know are terrorists but they draw the line when you try to speak yes and they, he clearly made it uh, open that it's a peaceful protest right. and if they had to detain him and charge him for terrorism as they are talking about yes. they would have allowed uh, probably for the something to escalate to an extent where violence is already in place before you say you want to charge him that, that is the same thing they did to Soware. That is, uh, I think, uh, Sahara reporter's um, guy who actually was now, the, after five years, they have to quash all charges against him after spending millions or billions on senior advocate of Nigerians that they've been given uh, the job. Now, talking right. about this Hamas thing, I really don't want to join issues uh, on the Hamas-Israel issue conflict, so to speak, because they have their issues. And in Nigeria here, we have a very serious famine issue. You understand? Right. But because the, the, these leaders came into Nigeria, I think maybe that is what gave uh, that is uh, uh, that uh, um, Muslim, the cleric right. who uh, uh, insulted the first lady, mm -hmm. because I'll have to say she's the first lady, mm -hmm. insulted to say not just calling her an infidel, but also uh, uh, saying that she needs to be killed. Why would you say something like that? Why would somebody come out where they are, uh, where the camera is capturing the person to insult uh, uh, the, the first lady like that? But it's entirely up to them. I'm not uh, a fan of the first lady. I'm not a fan of Tinubu either. But at the same time, I give them respect as the respect is due to them. That's why whenever I want to call him, I call him Chief Bola Tinubu. You understand? Because he's an elderly statesman. That he has come and snatched it and run with it does not mean that I will have to come here, sit down and uh, insult him. No, we don't do like that. Right. But we clearly bring out what they are doing that is wrong in the government. We criticize what things that are not going well in their government and make sure that they take necessary action to make sure that those things are moving well. Uh, not be all, only us. Uh, forget how they speak grammar. Not be only us. They talk uh, these things. Even for mainstream media, then they talk them. Um, uh, channels don't talk their own. Arise don't take their own. I like Arise own pass. I like the way when they take the fine um, Make we listen how they take talk that thing. Because if I they talk I'm here and I then they talk say now because you be obedient family TV. You are exclusively uh, for obedience. That's why you are talking. Let's hear what the mainstream media has to talk about this. Nigerians have called on security forces to immediately arrest an Islamic cleric who in a now viral video declared that Nigeria's first lady, Senator Oluremi Tinubu, deserves to die for being a pastor. In the video, the cleric was heard saying the Muslim Muslim ticket which brought President Bola Ahmed Tinubu into power was a scam and that his wife was an infidel. He went further to refer to the Quran without providing any chapter or verse of the Quran to back his claim. Well, let's take some reactions. Well, this person wrote, This man clearly needs to be put behind bars, preaching violence, preaching ignorance, preaching hate. There are a lot of topics he could preach upon, but will never educate and call people to stop engaging in illicit wickedness and white-collar misconduct. In the same country, his utterances are equivalent to treasonable felony and not only fanaticism. The police and agencies responsible for citizens' safety should swiftly act on this type of crime for using people's ignorance to deploy mayhem. This is terror. Another Twitter user wrote, A Muslim cleric was recorded calling for the killing of Remy Tinubu because she is a pastor and an infidel. Even though I do not support this government, this is a reach, and I expect the weight of the law to be visited on him. There is a reason why serious nations do not allow for this sort of inflammatory rhetoric woven into sermons. This must not 
be allowed to lie. I mean, this is the power of social media, really. This video was posted on Twitter yesterday or the day before, and it's gotten so many retweets. And we at Arise News are calling on the Nigerian government to look into this. I mean, when I read the transcription, the man there was saying that Rami Tinubu should be beheaded. Dr. Abati. Well, <laughs> it, it's unbelievable. I can't believe it. You see, people use religion to divide the country. Religion is one of those fault lines within the Nigerian arrangement. And that somebody will have the temerity, the audacity, the confidence to go on uh, social media, to go public and ask that the wife of the president be killed. I mean, I, 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 it's the height of it. And I think that by now, the Department of uh, State Services should have arrested this man for questioning. Yes. The police also should have arrested him because under the criminal code, he, he has committed offense. If you look at the criminal code, if you threaten to kill anybody under section 320 of the mm -hmm. criminal code, you, are, you have committed a felony and you are liable to seven years imprisonment. Under section 323, you also cannot make an attempt to kill uh, anybody. Uh, it's, uh, you know, not to talk of uh, threatening that other people should go and kill somebody. Now again, Mrs. Remy Tinubu, everybody should realize this. It's a citizen with full rights under the Constitution of Nigeria. And those rights include the rights guaranteed under Section 38 of the Constitution, which talks about freedom, thought, conscience, and religion. There's nothing that says that if your husband is a Muslim, you too should be a Muslim. Your husband can be a Muslim, in fact, you can be a traditionalist. It is your right under the uh, Constitution. And I saw his comment about a Muslim, Muslim ticket and all that. That's a political statement. We keep saying that the pulpit should not be used to make divisive, inflammatory, unacceptable remarks. And that's a, a duty. There is a body called NIREC. That's a, the Nigerian, uh, the National Interreligious Council, which has leaders from every religion. And they meet regularly, you know, uh, uh, the leaders of both religions are there. I think it's about time that NIREC establish a task force to deal with, you know, clerics like this, whether Christian or Muslim, who make statements that will bring down the, 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 the doctrine, you know, on both sides, and to stretch the matter further. I'm surprised that this Islamic cleric doesn't even know the Quran. And how he couldn't read He it. was saying that uh, uh, Allah says anybody who is an infidel uh, should be killed. The, the, the Quran and the Hadith, if you look at both the Quran and the Hadith, there's nothing like that there. I have copies of the Quran. So I'm, I'm not even just putting anybody. I have copies of the Quran myself. See, it says that Islam is a religion of peace. Absolutely. And Islam preaches unity. It preaches oneness. Absolutely. So how can somebody claim that he's a, he's a cleric and he's turning the Hadith and the Quran upside down? This is part of the problem we face with religious charlatanism yes. in this country. Absolutely. The cleric story is a sad indication of how low our country has become. But I would also blame it largely on the politicians. Yeah. They are the ones that bring a lot of religion into politics because they want to use it and favor them. Let's not forget. And we condemn that. I condemn that cleric in totality. I think the government should go after him. But let's not forget, we've had other clerics make more incendiary statements. I don't do anything to them. We have the shake goodness of this world. Yeah. We, we, what, what was the need for getting 40 bishops to endorse candidate Tinubu dead or aspirant Tinubu dead? The episode of the 40 bishops just to be able to justify a Muslim Muslim ticket. They are the ones making mockery of religion. And that's the, they are the ones that are giving impetus to people like this to be able to say all sorts of incendiary things like this. So the politicians too should watch it. Absolutely. That man needs to be picked up immediately. Okay, so uh, we've heard it. Uh, it's coming out from left, right, and center. And uh, we condemn such, uh, inf uh, such things coming out from people who preach and uh, has a lot of assembly members who are listening to them. Shouldn't uh, such things be happening? Shouldn't be happening at all. Then um, let's get from that very part of um, the north, let's get to Plateau State, 
where we heard that a protest again has erupted against the insecurity, hunger, joblessness uh, in the state of Plateau. We can see these are what you call the hunger strike protest. It is always peaceful. You will not see people who are branded. You will not see people who buses has brought with an air condition. You, are, you will not see people who has been bought or sponsored. These are well-meaning Nigerians who out of their hunger come out to express their displeasure with the government that the cost of living is very high and the palliatives cannot exalt this nation at all. Um, well, we've seen again another um, hunger um, protest, like um, you rightly mentioned, um, a proper protest that is not sponsored. We don't see them with um, graphic designed tees or, um, you know, graphic designed, um, you know, banners. We can tell that these people are just young men who came out to um, air their views. And once again, it's sad to see. And I remember saying on this same show that um, I am not a prophet of doom, but there's going to be a lot of protest over, um, you know, the prices of um, foodstuffs and the rising hunger and insecurity in the land. And it's sad to see that this, um, you know, prophecy is coming to be true because every day, um, despite the fact that our Senate president thinks that the um, hunger protests are sponsored and that these are just, um, you know, a figment of our imaginations that um, people are actually going through hunger in um you know different states of the country and also speaking about um i have something to say about the um you know um abia states um going on with the 800 million dollars power plants right then what we've seen was going on the alex oti led government in abia state has literally left um the majority of nigerians and nigerian states behind and then you know on the 26th of february he's going to be commissioning a geometric power plant that is set to supply steady power to the nine local governments in Abu. That was a big dive you did there from the other side. You entered to the side where things are happening, good news is right, coming out. Right. It's more like trying to say bad news is going all around Nigeria, but Abia State, we are the only place we have an obedient uh -huh. governor. Yeah. Something special is happening. Right. Guys, we need to give respect to whom respect is due. We need to give accolade to whom it is due. You. The only obedient governor that we have is Alex Oti. And he's doing wonders in Abia State. Right. Talk about the road construction that is superb. Talk about this very $800 million geometric power plant right. set to be commissioned on Monday, 26 February, which is just in three days time in abia state to supply steady power to nine local government in aba local government and nine local government in abia state that is so you know the 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 good part is i want to encourage our people to go to the comment section and how Alex Oti, right. the only obedient you can imagine if we had like 10 obedient governors. Wow. What do you think will happen? Well, um, this is just a testament of what um, good governance can do, right? This man has barely been on seat for one year, and we've seen the wonders. Um, we can, at this point, almost liken him to, um, you know, Jesus Christ. No blasphemy intended, but this man has been working miracles. Um, this is a state that has always um, been a victim of bad governance, but this man came, since he assumed office, he decided to turn the fortunes of um, Abia State people um, to, to, to be good, right? And it's just very interesting to see. And I personally applaud him. We um, well-meaning Nigerians applaud him because to see that this is a fit, 24 hours power supply in a state, and meanwhile, we still have people giving all out um, 24 billion naira to um for hard subsidy meanwhile this feat was um achieved with just 800 million dollars but we have people calling huge sums of money for the most despicable reasons and billions um, billions billions and still there will be no light right. now that we are experiencing heat wave abia state wants to get in about 24 hours worth of power supply right. this is just incredible please go to the comment section share this video let other people join in congratulating alex ot of um this of uh, abia state and again uh, we need 
to you know make sure that we get more of obedient governors come the next uh, three years uh, or so we just need to get that because if we had this i think nigeria is going to be driven because abia state now we are not seeing any protests coming out from there it's always good news good news and good news and that is a friend of our principle so for today uh, we are going to call it a day, but wherever you are watching us from, please, if today is the first time of watching Obedient Family TV, do subscribe. That is what you can do to promote this very channel and the obedience worldwide. Wherever you are and you have watched this, please, uh, talking is not cheap. Some people say it is cheap. It is not. A lot of things are involved. But all we desire from you for now is just for you to like and share this video. Until we come your way again, Again tomorrow please do a shout out for israel the activist in delta state that is being moved for uh terrorism charges let's trend on him massively please do share this video thank you until tomorrow bye for now it's high time that our pastors stopped asking nigerians to pray more for nigeria because god is not deaf Societies that invest in education, in good governance, in agriculture and infrastructure, and the rule of law will prosper, and they will enjoy a good life. While those, of course, that shirk their responsibilities and promote mediocrity, corruption, tribalism, horrible elections, even if they do the most prayer and they are the most religious, religious they would never prosper. There is no demon that cannot be killed with better leadership. There's no demon that will survive better investment of national resources into development. No demon will survive a free and fair election. There's no demon from any parts of, of hell that will survive a nation that has 100,000 megawatts of electricity. That demon will die. Now, let's stop pretending that the emperor is not only, or rather, let's tell the emperor the truth. Not only is he stark naked, he has defecated on himself. Good morning, Nigerians.